Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and I'm back with another important and interesting video. So dear students, in today's video we are going to learn about the ray diagrams of biconvex lens. So before going to learn the ray diagrams of biconvex lens, let's have a look on biconvex lens and let us see how does the centers of curvature and focal points are formed. Dear friends, this is how exactly a biconvex lens looks like, in which both the surfaces are bulging outward. The name itself explains, bi means two and convex mean bulging outwards. So in a biconvex lens, both the surfaces are bulging outward. One more interesting fact here is that in a biconvex lens, each curved surface is a small part of a big sphere. As you can see in this diagram, this curved surface is a part of this big sphere and this curved surface is a small part of this big sphere. So these spheres are having their respective centers. So the center of the sphere is called center of this curvature. So the center of this sphere is called center of this curvature. And if I keep an object at infinite distance from the lens, the light rays which are coming are parallel to the principal axis. Now the light ray travels, strikes to the lens, get refracted and passes through the focal point. So if I keep the object left side, the focal point is formed on right side. And if I keep my object on right side, the focal point is formed on left side. So in this way, for a biconvex lens, we are having two centers of curvature and two focal points. And this is how exactly our biconvex lens looks like. So this <clears throat> midpoint or geometrical center of the lens is called optic center. It is indicated by P. So while drawing the ray diagrams, it is not possible for us to draw this biconvex lens all the time. So for our conveniency, we are going to have a shorthand notation. So the biconvex lens is finally indicated by this figure. I mean, there are two arrows on the two heads. So dear students, let's move ahead and let's try to learn the ray diagrams and let us see how images are formed from biconvex lens. So these are the ray diagrams of biconvex lens showing the possible positions where we can place the object in front of a biconvex lens. So let us discuss all the ray diagrams one after the other. So dear students, in the first position, the object is kept at infinity. As it is clear, position 1 object is at infinity. So this is the object which is present at infinite distance from this biconvex lens and already you know when the objects are placed at infinite distance the light rays which are coming are always parallel to each other and of course parallel to principal axis. So all the parallel light rays are approaching to the biconvex lens. When they strike to the biconvex lens they refract and they all are collected at a single point. That single point is called focal point. So all the light rays are meeting at this point. So image is formed at this point. So finally we can say that the image is formed at focal point. And dear students, if you fix a screen here, so the image is formed on that screen and you can save the image, you can store the image. So that image is called real image. And of course, every real image is inverted. And because the image is formed on point, so it is of point sized and very smaller in size. So we can say it is highly diminished. The meaning of diminished is smaller in size. So <clears throat> the image formed is at focus of point sized highly diminished and inverted and of course real.
now in the second position the object is kept beyond center of curvature if you see carefully this is focal point and this is center of curvature so the object is kept beyond center of curvature so for the image formation we are drawing two simple light rays the first light ray is traveling parallel to the principal axis and the second light ray which is passing through optic center so <clears throat> the first light ray strikes to the lens refracts and passes through focal point and of course we know all the parallel light rays refracts from the lens and passes through focal point one more special point here is the light rays which are passing through optic center are undeviated mean the light rays don't get refracted so on the other side these two light rays meets at this point so the image is formed at this point so if i draw the image the image is present in between f and c so dear students if you fix a screen here you can store the image you can save the image so from this fact we can say this is a real image and of course it is inverted and if you see carefully this is smaller in size so here are the characteristics the image is present in between f and c of course it is real and inverted and it is diminished mean smaller in size in the third position the object is kept at center of curvature c if you see the diagram the object is present at center of curvature so to observe the image formation we are taking the help of two same light rays that is the first light ray which is traveling parallel to the principal axis strikes to the lens and the second ray which is traveling towards the lens and passes through optic center these two light rays passes through the lens this light ray gets deviated gets refracted and passes through focal point as you see in the diagram the next light ray which is passing through optic center is undeviated which which don't get refracted now these two refracted light rays meets at this point so the image is formed at this point if you see carefully the image is present at another center of curvature so if you keep the object at first center of curvature the image is formed on second and if you keep the object on second the image is formed on first center of curvature so if you see carefully the object and image both are of same size so definitely it will be a real image and of course real images are inverted so let's have a look on characteristics image formed is at c real and inverted and the image is of same size now in the fourth position the object is kept in between f and c that is between focal point and center of curvature as you see in the diagram the object is present in between f and c now to observe the image formation we are taking two simple light rays the two same light rays the first which is traveling parallel to the principal axis after the refraction passes through focal point the next light ray which is passing through optic center and which is undeviated which don't get refracted now after striking to the lens after refracting they continue to travel on the other side of the lens now the two refracted light rays meet at this point so the image is formed at this point so it is clear from the figure from the diagram that if you fix a screen here you can store the image you can save the image so definitely it will be a real image and of course real images are inverted so let us have a look on characteristics so image formed is of course beyond c beyond center of curvature it is real and inverted as you see it is inverted so inverted images are real and of course it is bigger in size so we can say it is enlarged image now in the fifth position the object is kept at focal point now if you see carefully the object is present at focal point so all the light rays which are emitting from the focal point striking to the lens 
and after striking to the lens they refract and continue to travel parallel to the principal axis so all the parallel light rays continue to travel up to infinity so the image is formed at infinity so we cannot define the characteristics of the image formed so let's have a look on the theory image formed is at infinity and characteristics of the image cannot be discussed Now in the sixth position, the object is kept in between P and F. That is, the object is present in between optic center and focal point. So here is my biconvex lens. This is the optic center. This is focal point. So this is the object O which is present in between P and F. Now to observe the image formation, we will take the help of two simple light rays as usual. This is the first light ray which travels parallel to the principal axis. After the refraction, it passes through focal point. The next is passing through optic center. If you see carefully these two light rays, there is no chance of meeting on this side. So there is no chance of image formation on this side. So we can extend those two light rays to get the image. So in this case, the image is formed on same side of the object. If you see carefully, this is the image which is bigger in size, which is larger in size as compared to object. So the image is said to be enlarged and of course it is not inverted. So it is said to be erect and of course the images which are formed on same side of the object are virtual images. If the image is formed on other side of the lens, it is said to be real. But if it is formed on same side, it is said to be virtual. And virtual images cannot be stored, cannot be saved as real images can be saved. So let's have a look on the characteristics. Image formed is as same side of the object. Of course, the images which are formed on same side are virtual. And of course, virtual images are always erect. No virtual image is inverted and the image is bigger in size. So hence it is enlarged. Dear students, these are the ray diagrams associated with biconvex lens. If you like this video, you can tell me in the comment section. Thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos.